Hello everyone. Today we are discussing the external jugular vein. This is a short essay question carrying 5 marks. So let us see how to present this answer. So if this question is asked in the exam, you can present it under the following headings. So you will first introduce about the external jugular vein. You will say how this vein is formed. You will say about the course of this vein. You will say where this vein gets terminated. You will say about its tributaries and the applied aspects. So to introduce uh, the external jugular vein. This vein drains blood from most of the face and the scalp. So the external jugular vein drains blood from most of the scalp and the face. So let us see how this external jugular vein is formed. As you can see a vein here, this is the external jugular vein. Let us see how it is formed. So this vein is the retromandibular vein. So the retromandibular vein divides into anterior division and the posterior division. Now the posterior division of the retromandibular vein joins with posterior auricular vein to form the external jugular vein. So that is about the formation of the external jugular vein that is by the union of posterior division of the retromandibular vein and posterior auricular vein. Where is this formed? This external jugular vein is formed within the lower part of the parotid gland. So if this is the parotid gland, so within the lower part of the parotid gland, the external jugular vein is formed. So that was about the formation. Now let us see, once it is formed, let us see about the course of this vein. So once it is formed, this external jugular vein, it runs downwards and backwards across the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So this muscle here is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So the external jugular vein, it runs across the sternocleidomastoid muscle and it is covered by a muscle which is the platysma. Then what happens? It pierces the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia, appears in the supraclavicular triangle. We will be seeing it in the next slide and it terminates into the sub clavian vein. So in the next slide we will see where is the supraclavicular triangle. So here you can see the course. So once this is the external jugular vein it runs downwards and backwards across the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is overlapped by a muscle that is the platysma. Now you can see a triangle here so this what I am drawing is the inferior belly of the homohyoid. So this triangle is known as supraclavicular triangle. The external jugular vein after it is formed, it runs downwards and backwards across the sternocleidomastoid muscle and then it appears in the supraclavicular triangle. To appear in the supraclavicular triangle, it pierces the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia and then it appears in the supraclavicular triangle and drains into the subclavian vein. So having discussed about the course, now we will see about the tributaries. So the formative tributaries as already discussed, it is formed by the posterior division of the retromandibular vein and the posterior auricular vein. Both this vein will join to form the external jugular vein. So these two are the formative tributaries namely posterior division of the retromandibular vein and the posterior auricular vein. So they are the formative tributaries. Let us see the terminal tributaries. Now the terminal tributaries are the anterior jugular vein. So this is the anterior jugular vein and then we have the transverse cervical vein. Then we have the suprascapular vein. These are the terminal tributaries. Then we have the oblique jugular vein. I will show here. Yes. Then we have the oblique jugular vein here. Oblique jugular vein which opens into the internal jugular vein. So the vein you are seeing here that is the internal jugular vein 
oblique jugular vein opens into the internal jugular vein i will show it once again so oblique jugular vein opens into the internal jugular vein then we have the posterior external jugular vein this is a posterior external jugular vein which drains blood from the lower aspect of the scalp it runs parallel to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and opens into the external jugular vein so these are the tributaries of the external jugular vein now we will see the applied aspect the right atrial pressure can be assessed by examining the external jugular vein now what happens is this in this patient this is the external jugular vein which is seen engorged usually this vein will not be seen so prominent but in case of right heart failure this vein appears to be engorged so that is about the applied aspect there is another applied aspect we will be seeing it now so as already discussed we have discussed that the external jugular vein it courses across the sternocleidomastoid muscle and about 2.5 cm above the clavicle it pierces the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia and it appears in the supraclavicular triangle now what happens at this point where the external jugular vein pierces the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia the wall of the vein gets adherent to the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia thereby at this point at this point where the external jugular vein it pierces the investing layer of deep cervical fascia if the vein is collapsed or it is injured or torn at this place it wa its wall cannot retract back because it is adherent to the deep cervical fascia thereby what happens is hair embolism can occur that is during inspiration air can be pulled inside this vein and it causes air emb embolism to avoid this a finger can be used to apply pressure at this site so this is about the applied aspect so thank you so much for watching this video